Whoa! <laughs> Man. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a big one. I'll bleed this one. There's less water on the other side. Here, let me see that one. That one I'm going to keep and bleed for eating. everybody it's that time of year when the shad are running out here and there are a ton of them out there to catch i can't think of a more fun spring day than to head down to the river and put the smack down on 20 or 30 of these guys but most people out here on the west coast think shad is just a trash fish and they'll only keep them to use for crab bait and that's kind of a shame because american shad may be the most iconic and historically important fish in american history there's a ton of information out there if you want to check it out, and if you're a shad guy like me, it's pretty darn interesting. But that being said, it's not the easiest fish to prepare. It's not one that you're just going to batter and fry up because there's a ton of little bones in there. So I'm always looking for new and delicious ways to cook shad. So, today, since shad is essentially a giant herring, I'm putting together this Scandinavian-style pickled shad that if you're into pickled herring, you're going to love. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is to soak the shad in a strong salt brine overnight. And that's going to kind of help to firm that fish up as well as cure it a little and knock down any of the harmful bacteria that might be in there. Remember, I'm not cooking this fish, so we're going to rely on the salt and the acidity of the vinegar to keep this safe to eat. And this brine comes together real easy. It's just one cup of plain salt or pickling salt for every five cups of water and you can just mix up as much of that as it takes to cover up your fish. I'll just pour it all in this jar and then I will shake it up real good and get that completely dissolved. And now that the salt is all the way dissolved, it's time to bring in the shad. I've got this beautiful shad that I just caught and I've taken the scales off and filleted them and now I'm going to take the skin off before getting them into the brine. There are hundreds and hundreds of little tiny bones that run throughout these fillets and it just makes it difficult to eat. But the pickling process is going to soften those little bones up and make it so they go down nice and smooth. Now the skin on these is really thin and it is a little trickier to get off than like with a thick skinned bass or something but I'm going to start it in the same way by just cutting in down by the tail, slicing up. To the front. It's such thin skin that it can break real easy on you. But that's also why you can just leave it on there because it is thin and soft. Now I did pretty darn good with this one. I'm just gonna trim up a little right there and right there. And I'm actually gonna cut a little bit of the fat off of here because it's a little strong flavored but not bad. Just the dark stuff there. There is a way to fillet these and take all the little bones out. And I did that exactly once and it took me about 30 minutes to do one fish. <laughs> there, that'll do. I don't need to get every bit of that fat off there. And now I'm just going to slice this into little bite sized pieces and throw them into that brine. Just like that. All right, got all my shad in here and I'll just the lid on, stir it all around really well. And then this goes out into the refrigerator overnight. After the shad's been soaking in the salt brine for a day or two, I wanna put together the pickling solution a few hours before I mix the whole thing together. That way this will have time to cool down completely before it hits that fish. If I go in with a warm solution on that fish, it's gonna mush it up and it's not gonna be very good. 
Now, to put the pickling solution together, I have three cups of water, to which I'm going to add two cups of white vinegar, one cup of white sugar, and I'll kind of stir that a little, get that sugar started dissolving. And now I've got a third of a cup of pickling spices, a couple of bay leaves, and I like to add a bunch of extra allspice berries because they're kind of a signature flavor in this. So I've got here about a quarter cup more of allspice berries. Now I'm going to put this on the stove and I'm going to bring it up to a simmer. Let that simmer for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to let it cool down completely. I'm getting ready to pack my pickled fish and the last ingredient I'm going to get ready is some nice red onion. So I'm just going to cut these into some nice thin half rounds. Now this next step is completely optional, but I'm going to strain the pickling solution through this cheesecloth. But first I'm going to actually scoop off some of these allspice berries and reserve them. They're easy to get because they're floating. I'll also reserve those bay leaves. Now the reason I'm doing this is that some of these smaller bits are just kind of a pain in the butt to eat around when this is done. But the bigger allspice berries and the bay leaves, I'm going to go ahead and let float around in there, mainly for aesthetics. But I am going to tie this closed to make a little pouch and still put this in there because it's got a ton of flavor. Real easy, I'll just pull that into a pouch. And then we'll just tie that together with some butcher's twine. All right, now I'm going to take this shad and I'm going to go and strain off all of the salt brine. Now, this is looking really good. It's nice and firm and it should be salty enough that I don't need to add any salt to the pickling solution. All right, I've got a nice big jar here. And I'm going to go ahead and start layering this stuff in. It could use a whole bunch of little jars, but this has a much smaller footprint in my refrigerator. So let's start out with a layer of shad. Let's grab a couple handfuls. We'll put the shad down in there. And then we'll throw in a layer of onion. Maybe one of the bay leaves. And a few of those allspice berries. And then we'll just do it again. Right about the middle here, I'll throw in that herb packet. That looks pretty good. I'm not going to go all the way to the top because I want to make sure and get enough of that pickling solution in there to really cover this up and do a good job. I'll go ahead and pour that in right now. Alright, shake that down a little bit. And now this is going to go out into the refrigerator for at least a week before I try it. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh yeah! Shatter on the chew! <laughs> That's a good one there. Oh, Pretty good, sucker. You could have had that in the boat if you just kept the momentum going. <laughs> Look out. I hate that anchor thing. There we 
we go. Nice. Yeah. Good job, buddy. Oh, come on. Oh, that's a fish. I'm gonna get one too now. Come on, Andy. Fish on, fish on! Fish on! Coming down! Oh my god! There you go, that's a monster oh, shad. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a monster shad. You want a shad picture? <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be great. Look at this thing, holy <laughs> It's been a week, and this shad should be ready to go. Smells great. That seems pretty firm. So, now let's get some of this plated up and see how we did. Now let's see how we did. Let me get a nice piece of that herring. Don't want to eat the allspice berry. It's really just there for looks. We'll get some of that pickled onion and a little bit of that fresh dill on there for a nice pop of freshness. Oh boy, looks great. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That has got great texture. It's nice and firm, not mushy at all. Mm, it's sweet and savory. The onions got a lot of crunch left to them. Really, if you like that stuff that you get in the jar at the grocery store, this is gonna blow you away, I promise. Now let's church one up a little bit. Oh, I'll get a nice thin piece of bread. A little darker one would be nicer. And I've got some really, really spicy mustard here. And I'll get a nice piece of my shad. Pour some of those onions on there, and the dill, and I'll add some, a few little cubes of either dill or sweet pickle for another little crunch. Take a look at that. Hmm. <laughs> That really took it up a notch. This is great on its own, but that is delicious. Mmm. Well, I really hope you get a chance to try this because I really think you're gonna love it. But even more so, I hope you can get out there and catch yourself a whole bunch of shad and have the time of your life. Thanks for watching.